service online year at St. Sebastian's Church. My name is Marvin Vogel and I'm the families and youth worker here at the church. Today is an all-age service uh, and we're going to be looking at the next fruit of the Spirit which is patience. Uh, before we start I'd just like to say the next time that you see me I'm going to be hiding Right, okay, so if you see the setting, you have to, I'm going to give you a few, a few seconds to try and guess where I'm hiding. Okay, and then I will reveal myself. So try your best to find out where I'm hiding. It's a good game of hide and seek. Um, and before we start with our worship and, uh, and singing today, um, I would like to start with a little bit of a prayer. Shall we pray? Thank you, dear Lord, for this morning. Thank you uh, that we can meet together, even if it's not in a building, but uh, online, uh, that we pray that we will learn, uh, we'll learn from you and we will um, take what we've learned. And, and I hope that it challenges us and makes us better people. In Jesus name, amen. Right, cool, so see you soon. Please join us and sing My Lighthouse.
Well done, if you had guessed, uh, if I was hiding underneath the bean bag. So, well done to you. Um, I'm going to go and hide again just now in a minute, uh, so you've got another chance. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, me and my, uh, my little brother, uh, Trevor. We were very impatient, uh, sometimes quite a lot impatient, and impatient is the opposite of patient. Uh, so basically we had no patience, or very little. Uh, we'd always say things uh, like, I'm hungry, mum, I'm hungry, as mum was cooking. Uh, knowing she'd be done in 10 minutes, we still couldn't wait. Oh, I'm hungry, we want food now. Or, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And it's only been two minutes into the trip. Uh, and I don't know if you do the same. I don't know, maybe, but me and my brother Trevor were a bit of a nightmare. Uh... But one day, uh, because we weren't patient, something really bad happened. Uh, and I'm going to share that with you. But first of all, I'm going to go and hide again. So try and find me again. Ta-da! I'm sure none of you thought I was in the bin. Uh, who guessed it? Well, anyways, well done if you did. Um, to continue with my story, and Trevor, um, one day, as my mum was baking, uh, and uh, she got the cake mixture together, and she asked me and uh, my brother Trevor to help. So we helped with the cake mixture, and then she, she had to go somewhere in a rush, uh, and me and Trevor were so keen to, to eat this cake, um, but at the same time, we were tempted to eat the cake mixture because uh, we were a little bit impatient. We decided to eat some of the cake mixture, and I think we ate quite a lot. Um, I'll finish the story. I'm going to go hide again, so and that will be my last time. Okay, so I'll finish the story when you find me next time. Okay, cool. Well done, if you guessed, uh, behind the big tree. Uh, and that was my last um, hide and seek game. But to finish off my story, so me and my brother Trevor, after having ate all this cake mixture, or quite a lot of it, um, my mum came back, ready to bake a beautiful, wonderful cake, only to find me and my brother Trevor lying in the lounge, on the floor with poorly tummies yes we had poorly tummies because we ate too much cake mixture not good for you um, but the story there is if we were a bit patient we would have ate a really nice beautiful lovely chocolate cake but instead we we weren't patient enough and we ate um, a chocolate we, we ate the cake mixture I mean so that is the lesson for today um, and uh, Rachel is going to talk to us more about patience and what God says. So um, thanks for watching. Mark 10, 13 to 16. Jesus blesses little children. Some people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them but the disciples scolded the people. When Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Yeah. Then he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on each of them and blessed them. Bless them. Bless them. Amen. Hello, good morning. My name is Rachel Jeremiah, for those of you who don't know me. And today I'm going to unpack some of the things that we heard um, in the gospel this morning in our reading. 
So before I do that, let's pray. Father God, I pray um, that the words that I have prepared really speak to all of our hearts. And as we think about these things um, that are written in your word, you would disclose truth to our hearts and draw us closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. So I'd like to open today with a question for you to have a think about over the next few minutes as I talk. I have three objects. Number one, an ice cube tray. Number two, a green banana. And lastly, some seeds. My question is, what do these three things have in common? An ice cube tray? a green banana and some seeds. Oh, seeds. I'll leave it with you. In our reading today, we witnessed the disciples being rather impatient to those who were bringing their children to be touched and blessed by Jesus. The disciples turned the children away pretty sternly, but Jesus adopted quite a different attitude, one of kindness and generosity and patience. My version of the Bible describes Jesus as indignant as he defended the children's rights to approach him and he said, do not stop them. Which brings us on to the next question of the morning that I'd like each of us to start off by thinking about. How patient are you? I have to confess that I am not always the most patient person in the world. I can find waiting absolutely excruciating. In fact, I'm one of those people when approaching the checkout in the supermarket, do some mental gymnastics to try to find out how I could spend as little time in the queue as possible. I'm so keen to beat the system and I have so much impatience. I don't have time to spend that extra second of my busy life standing around. But actually, I'm quite wrong to do that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But in our society, sometimes busyness is valued a little bit too much as a sort of badge of honour. It seemed to be good as a doer or someone proactive. It makes us feel important and seem important. But is that real importance? For people like me, this forced wait season of wait during the coronavirus pandemic has been very difficult. As we wait for schools to reopen and churches to reopen, for postponed parties and weddings to go ahead, for workplaces to get back to normal, we can feel stagnant and disillusioned, bored, and above all else, pretty impatient for things to get back to normal. But actually, being patient is a vital part of trusting in God, especially when our life circumstances are not quite as we would prefer them to be. In fact, God can and does use the weight. Think of King David, of Moses, of Sarah, of Noah, of Job, Abraham and Jesus himself, who didn't start his public ministry until he was 30. Part of some part of developing a godly character is submitting to God's timeline, but his spirit gives us patience, the patience that we need to endure the weight and to endure any uncertainty that can come our way. In each of the stories of the characters that I listed, who, by the way, weren't always especially patient themselves along the way, God used their weight. He moulded them in his ways during the wait. God was always faithful and is always faithful. We should wait with patience. We should wait eagerly with expectation, but also with an attitude of openness as to how God can mould us along the way. And Jesus had a lot to say about it in the reading today about the manner in which we fix our eyes on him. Jesus said in the gospel today, Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them and blessed them. In other words, like the children in the account, we also must fix our eyes on Jesus and him alone. 
And there never is more truth in that than in a time of difficulty or a season of waiting. And this way in which we are called to fix our eyes on Jesus is addressed elsewhere in the Bible. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 it reads, Fix your eyes on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So just like the children that Jesus used in that example, we are called to fix our eyes on Jesus in an uncomplicated way, whatever the storm. Let us hold on to his hope and let us lean into God more than ever during a difficult season and ask him to fill us with more patience as we endure it. Let's trust that there are blessings even in the midst of a difficult time and let's be thankful to God's faithfulness. In a time of waiting, there is also time to ask God to prepare our hearts for where he is leading us next. With God's patience, a wait need not be a frustration, but a blessing and a gift. So, did anybody work out the connection between my three objects? The answer is that all three of them are actually better after a delay. In the case of the ice cube tray, it needs time to freeze before you can enjoy that nice cool drink. The green banana, if you ate it now, it would be hard and not so sweet. It needs time to develop its flavour as it turns yellow. And the seeds, of course, sometimes have to wait a whole year into the next season before they bloom. The weight in all three cases are not wasted. Patience is never wasted. So let's pray. Father God, you know that we find it so hard to be patient. Waiting patiently is so difficult in a world that seems to value the opposite. We ask that you fill us with more of your patience, with more of your Holy Spirit so that we get better at being patient. We pray that you will help us to trust your timings and we thank, thank you for your faithfulness, whatever adversity we face. Please mould us, teach us, prepare us and speak to us about our, new, our next steps, especially during this time when our world waits in, in a huge scale. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me singing I'm Special.
Hello everyone, I'm Chris and I'm going to be leading us through some interactive prayers this morning. For these prayers you're going to need some paper, some scissors and a bowl of water. Go and get those things now. Now that you're back, let us begin. So, you're going to get your pieces of paper and cut them up into some small squares. Here's some I made earlier. On your squares of paper, you can draw or uh, write out some prayers for patience within your family. I'm going to write patience with my little brother. Then with your piece of paper that's got your prayer on it, you're going to fold in the corners. Like so. Mine's a bit odd, but I'm sure you'll do better. With your piece of paper, you're then going to put it into your bowl of water. And in doing so, putting it into the bowl of water we're send, taking our prayers and giving them to God. And if you look closely, you can see the piece of paper start to unfold. Just watch it and appreciate it for a moment. We're now going to pray for our wider community, for uh, Wokingham, Crowthorn and the surrounding areas. So get another piece of paper and write on it some prayers for patience for our wider community. I'm going to pray for patience with um, the York Council because that is where I'm based at the moment. And then again, with your little piece of paper, you're going to fold in the corners. And we're going to put it into the water. So as we've put it into the water, let us pray. Father, we pray for patience and guidance for our local councils. We pray that they would continue to lead us and to serve us. In Jesus name. Amen. Finally, let us pray for our nation. You might want to draw a small map of England, Wales, Northern Ireland on your little piece of paper. I'm going to pray for patience with our government because we don't want to rush coming out of lockdown too quickly. I'm going to write that now. And then again, we're going to fold in the corners. And we're going to put it into our bowl of water. And so, Father, we ask for patience with our national leaders. We pray that they would ease lockdown restrictions with wisdom and slowly, and that we would not get upset or impatient when we can't get a haircut or we can't meet inside. As you can see, over about a minute or so, our pieces of paper have opened and we've waited patiently for this to happen. This is, this looks like flowers are opening in bloom and blossom. So let us wrap up our interactive prayers today with simply saying thank you to God. So, thank you, Father, that you came and lived with us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who showed us patience. Thank you that you brought your spirit here to dwell with us today. I pray that you would give us all more patience 
in the weeks ahead as lockdown restrictions slowly lift. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please join us and sing, Come Set Your Rule. much for joining us here at St. Sebastian's Church. Uh, our online service is available uh, every Sunday. Um, so please tune in, tune in, tune in. It'd be great to have you again. Um, thanks to the technical team for putting this all together. Uh, and I just want to end uh, with some prayer, uh, if that's okay. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Thank you for teaching us about the fruit of the Spirit. And today, as we looked into patience, may we have the patience with uh, other people and the patience in different situations. And I just pray that this is something that can make us into better people. And I just pray as well for next week as we go into a new week. In Jesus' name, amen. So for now, goodbye. There was
was a snail called Herbert who was so very slow. He caused a lot of traffic jams wherever he would go. The ants were always getting mad, and the beetles, they would fume. But Herb would always poke along and sing this little tune. Have patience, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. When Herbert was much younger, he often got in trouble. Forgetting that he was a snail, he did things on the double. He'd crash through every spider web, and with crickets he'd collide. Till one day Herbert's father took his feeling son aside. Have patience, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. this tale. Some of you may find yourself behind a creeping snail. So if you get impatient and you're easily disturbed, think about this little song and take a tip from her. Have patience, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. Thank you.